Hey guys, Waterfaller41 here, and today I am working on installing the Mopar rear wheel liners on my 2020 Ram Rebel pickup truck. So when I bought the truck, one of the biggest things that kind of bugged me was the fact that the rear wheel wells don't come with liners. And when you have a white truck, it sticks out kind of quite a bit. So it looks kind of cheap without the rear wheel liners. And coming from the K2 platform of the GM truck, so I had that 2014 GMC Sierra, where they have that fiberboard uh, rear wheel liner, and they actually have it in the front too. It's a really nice liner. Um, unfortunately, the only one that's made for this truck right now is the Mopar one, and it's kind of cheap, flimsy plastic. However, it looks much better than leaving all of this exposed. And I'll show you in a little bit what the drawback of leaving everything exposed. Um, when I bought my truck, it was sitting on a dealership's lot and they're under construction, so they had to drive the truck through a lot of mud to get it out of the lot. And actually what's happening is there's a ton of mud caked up in the back and then in the rear bumper. So the liner should help with that, uh, particularly because you're not gonna have these openings where things are gonna go down and collect in the back. So to get started with this, there's a couple things you need to remove. So you have these one third liners in there right now. So we're gonna remove the white one or the front one completely. We don't need that one anymore. And then we're gonna remove the back one. And the back is actually a two piece. Um, this front portion of it is plastic welded to the rear section of it. We're gonna remove the rear section. We don't need that anymore. Uh, we just need the front portion so we can go back in and reattach it. And then the uh, the liner itself, the the new liner from Mopar is just gonna slip in right behind it. So eight millimeter, we'll remove all of the fender bolts, which are all the fender flare bolts, which you gotta remove in order to get these two guys out. And then you need to remove it anyway, because in order to get the new liner in there, um, you need to tighten it with the eight millimeter bolts. Now everything's eight millimeters with the exception of that bolt right there, holding in the rear one third liner, that's a 10 millimeter. But everything else eight millimeters should pop right out. So what we're gonna do first is remove this bolt and then everything on the fender flare, pop out that guy. And then in order to get this rear one out, we have to pull off this piece. So we're gonna undo that bolt and then this piece snaps in with some clips. Now in full disclosure, I already did this on the passenger side, it's a little cold in my garage. And when I pulled this out, the clips that actually attached this piece of plastic to the rest of the body or to the metal, they cracked, so they're white little clips. So hopefully on this one, I can get them out in one piece. If not, it looks like two little cheap pieces that I can go to O'Reilly's around, pick up extra or spares. Okay, so I got all of the bolts on the inside of the fender flare removed. Uh, yeah. You don't need to undo this bottom one, it's not holding anything on, but you can see once you undo that bolt up against the body for the front, and then the bolts on the inside of the fender flare, this guy just basically falls right out. So we'll pull that out. We no longer need that guy anymore, so that's garbage. And then on the back, we got just this guy being held in by that 10 millimeter. And fortunately on this side, I was able to remove this bottom portion. So it uses these little slot clips and they go into those little white clips right there. And the white clips on the other side crack, but um, if you tackle this from the bottom of the truck and just kind of carefully pull it off, uh, it does pop off in one piece. So we'll set that aside because we're going to reuse that one. Now the last thing we need to do is take out this 10 millimeter bolt and then this bad boy is going to pop out and then we're going to modify this guy before we put it right back in. So let's go ahead and pull that out with a 10 millimeter bolt or socket. Okay, so I forgot to tell you why you got to take that piece off. So the reason you take that piece off is because there is a bottom bolt right here that is holding on to the bottom of this little splash guard here. So once you take that bolt off and I got the 10 millimeter off in the front, this bad boy is just gonna fall out and then we could get to uh, cutting that piece apart so we could use what, what we need of it and then trash the rest of it. So let's pull that out real quick here and then I will show you how to modify it. Okay, so I have that rear splash guard popped out so it was in the truck like this and pops out pretty easily once you unbolt it. So you can see there's two pieces of plastic there. We do not need the front portion of it. We just need the back portion of it because we need these clips for mounting the uh, the rear portion of the wheel liner. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a big old drill bit like this, and all you need to do is just break the lip on each of these plastic welds. So there's one, two, three, four plastic welds. And honestly, all you need to do is just tap it just to get that little lip off, and then the pieces pull apart. You don't need to have them completely flush. There you go. So you just basically drilled out these little plastic welds. You don't need them, anymore. you need this piece. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take this rear piece, clean it up a little bit, run it through some water just to get all this crap off there. 
Uh, but let me show you real quick what happens when you don't have rear wheel liners. Uh, hopefully you can see this in here. Use my lamp too. So if you look in here, you see a lot of mud caked up in there. And basically what happened is at the dealership that I bought this from, and no fault of their own, um, the lot was all muddy and they had to get my truck off the grass in order for me to test drive it. Uh, no rear wheel liners and this is what happened. So I'm going to pull all that crap out of there too and try to wipe everything down as much as I can. And then uh, we'll start with installing that rear wheel liner. But I mean, man, everything gets caked up in here. So I'll wipe everything down. Try to get as clean as I can. Spray it down with some simple green. Okay, so I went ahead and I got that piece cleaned up nice and good. I uh, cleaned it out in the sink just to get all the mud and all that crap that was already baked in there or caked in there off. And again, we just need this portion. We don't need the front portion of it. You could use the front portion of it to collect all that mud that you're going to pull out of the back of your truck. Uh, especially since you don't have the rear wheel liners. Anyway, went ahead and cleaned up what I could of everything inside. So now it's about as good as I can get it. Um, the next thing we need to do before we start installing the rear wheel liner is up on the top here. So in the top middle portion and then the, the uh, screw hole to the left and screw hole to the right, those have metal U-tabs behind them. We need to pull those U-tabs off and I'll show you why. So this is the rear wheel liner for the driver's side. And you can tell it's for the driver's side because the, the back portion of the rear wheel liner has these larger holes. It doesn't have the U-tabs. So the U-tabs cover everything from the front all the way to the back. But on top, you notice that it's already got the U-tabs on there. So we don't need the ones that are on the truck. We're gonna use the, the liner is gonna be behind the metal and then in front of the, uh, the fender flare itself. So let's go ahead and remove those metal tabs. Then we could repurpose one of those tabs for this back hole right here. Because now with the liner, we're gonna have a screw here, a screw there uh, to hold everything on. Uh, to make sure everything's held down nice and tight. So let's go ahead and do that and then get everything lined up to get that rear wheel liner in. So I went ahead and removed those U-clips up top. So there's one, two, and three that I removed. I took one of them and I put them over here so we could reuse this hole. Now, the one thing that I forgot to mention is once you go ahead and install these rear wheel liners, they will actually use one more screw than you have uh, on your truck. So you have to go out and get an additional screw, just like the fender flare screw. So you could get by without them for now. So I would say you could leave one of the ones up on top, undone or not not in there, and you could get everything else buttoned up and then just go to the store and buy these. I believe there's a part number for these. If I find it, I'll leave it in the description along with the description or the part numbers for the rear wheel liners. But again, because you're gonna be utilizing that hole which wasn't used before, you're gonna use an extra screw. So go ahead and use the screws for those for now and then just come back later after you install the rear wheel liner. And so let me go ahead and grab the rear wheel liner and then start getting everything thrown up in here. And basically it's pretty malleable uh, or pretty pliable plastic, so which sucks. Uh, but from an installation perspective, it's nice because you can kind of move it around where you want it. So we're gonna get it tuck back behind the wheel and then pull it up into place. And really what's gonna happen is that liner itself is gonna go up above and it'll be the top layer. Um, so you got the fender flare here, you got the metal from the truck bed and the liner itself is gonna go on top of both of those. With the exception of back here, after we reinstall this piece in here, that rear wheel liner is gonna go in between the fender flare and the truck bed metal. And then you're gonna have the rear wheel liner and then it's gonna to attach to this. So this piece of plastic is gonna be the back portion. So let me go ahead and then reinstall this guy and then we can get the rear wheel liner uh, popped into place. All right, so I have the liner tucked back behind the wheel. This easily, just you just kind of fold it up a little bit, throw it behind the wheel. And then what you're gonna do is lift it up into place. But I wanted to show you, so I got that rear plastic portion installed. You only need to put the bolt in, that 10 millimeter bolt up against the body. And then there's that eight millimeter bolt that goes through the bottom of the fender um, into the liner itself. You don't wanna put these screws in yet because you're gonna be using those screws to hold the back portion of the liner in place. So the next thing I'm gonna do is just get everything lined up. Um, I don't know if there's any sort of alignment tricks to this other than just mess with it. Um, it is pretty pliable, so it's easy to get into place, but again, it's kind of bulky. 
So the, what I did on the passenger side is once I got it into place at least close enough to those two screw holes, I made sure everything was at least up over the fender flare, and then I threw a screw into each one of those hand tight. That way I still had some room to play with everything. Then from there, you would put a bolt in down here, a bolt in that corner, and then you go through and do the top. That way everything kind of pulls into place. So I'm going to go ahead and try to monkey around with this and get it lined up and then start putting in the screws here. All right, so I got the liner completely installed. Now I got some tips for you. First tip is once you're installing it or while you're installing it and trying to line up all the holes for the hole, for the screws to go through, use this little opening up here so there's a divot in there, a big, big round um, indent there. Use that to kind of pull the, the liner side to side to align it. Then also make sure you put a screw in the back too just to hold it up against the truck. So then once you get everything tucked behind, it stays tucked behind the uh, the fender flares here. So the other tip I have is when you are tightening down the screws or when you're inst reinstalling the screws, install the bottom one on each side first. That will pull the liner down on each side and then the top portion with those screws done will sort of line up themselves. Uh, but yeah, do them in sequence. So start here and then work your way up and then uh, all the way back down here. You have a lot of room to play with on these back ones as long as you get that back screw um, through the first hole. Because uh, you remember the holes are a lot bigger in the back portion here because you're not actually going into the uh, the liner itself. You're going into that piece behind it. Um, but other than that, I am happy with how they look. Um, again, I'm coming from the GM where it had that fiber liner and that fiber liner was awesome. This is somewhat chintzy. Um, but I think over time it'll kind of, it'll do what I need it to do. And that's basically to keep that crap from collecting in the back again. Now you'll notice I don't have these back screws, uh, tightened down all the way. And the reason is I'm going to go ahead and start to install some mud flaps here. Um, I got a Duraflap video and it's probably the next video coming up on my channel. Um, but I'm going to hold off on installing all this portion until I figure out what I need to do in order to install those mud flaps. Other than that, I am pretty happy with these. Again, I'll leave the part numbers down below. Uh, there's a specific part number for each side, and it works for the 2019 and 2020 Rams. I believe it's the same part number for all of them, so everything from the Bighorn all the way up to, uh, what is it, the Limited or Longhorn, and then the Rebel in between. Um, but again, uh, it gives it a nice uniform look in the back, particularly with the light ones, so white and silver, or even red, where you could see that color in the rear 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 wheel well it's sort of a tacky look so it's nice that uh we have an option i wished it would just come from the factory this way instead of having to purchase an option particularly on this truck so this is essentially the off-road version of the ram why would you not include this in every base package with the rebel i don't know why but um yeah so i'm pretty happy with it again the install is a little frustrating because you got to move everything around it's also pretty dirty in there so get on it right away once you get your ram if you're going to wait a few years before putting it on, it might be too late at that point. Um, but I'm happy with the looks of them. Durability eh, could be a little bit better. Uh, but I think I paid about 126 bucks shipped total for everything. So you got to be careful with these things because they are pretty big and shipping can get you. This is actually the box that they came in. Um, so shipping can catch up with you on this one. So just be careful. I think I ordered mine from Mopar Parts Giant. So that was the cheapest shipping and it was 13 bucks out to me. Uh, so like I said, I'm going to go ahead and start installing some mud flaps here, but, um, that is how you install the rear wheel liners. Um, hopefully this helps you get them installed in your truck. If you have any questions, definitely leave them down in the comments below. Um, but yeah, this should provide the protection that I need in the rear with, uh, salt and, and hunting season and everything. Other than that, thank you very much for watching this relatively boring vanilla video on how to install the OEM Mopar, uh, rear wheel liners. Thank you very much. Appreciate the watch.